I'd like to call the governing board, Jefferson Elementary School District Governing Board meeting to order of September 13, 2013. Oh gosh, yes. <laughs> Here we are. Call to order at 7.02. May we have the roll call? Manufo Leah Inga Anawai. Here. Clayton Koo. Here. Rebecca Douglas. Here. Marie Brizuela. Here. Okay. So I'll get to the front here. Okay, so now we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance and let's get up into the Pledge of Allegiance. Why don't you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will have our students next, next meeting, won't we? All oh, right. <laughs> so much nice when they come. Okay, so let's uh, have the board review the board meeting guidelines. We have them up on the board as well. And uh, we can select, select one that we can discuss at the end of the meeting. Let's move on. We have the approval of the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Under special presentations, under A, Summer Learning in JESD 2017. This is here for information. And if I turn it over to you. Well, I can introduce it. So we've invited um, some of the uh, Summer Learning Program administrators to come and share with us um, what was going on in Jefferson Elementary School District during the months of uh, June and July um, so that we can get a sense of um, the experiences our students had, the varied experiences they had. So I don't know who's going to start. <laughs> <laughs> They're all, they all are. It's all, right. it's all one summer. It's all one summer. Good evening. I'm Jennifer LaRock. I'm one of the administrators on special assignment at Jefferson Elementary School District. And this summer I was the PPL for one of our summer programs. We'll go over kind of all the programs that were offered here on site at, at Jefferson. And then of course the goal for our summer learning program was to avoid learning loss during the summer by keeping our students engaged academically, socially, and mentally. We had an overarching three programs happening at the school district. One was our special education extended school year. We had Big Lift Inspiring Summers and in SL345. And we had A Learn and Think Together happening. First up, we'll, we'll talk about special education. Great. Good, good evening, everyone. I'm James Adams, Director of Special Ed. So this summer, like every summer, we have our um, extended school year for those students that are eligible through Special Ed. And Stephanie Martinez was our um, site administrator this summer. So she's going to talk about the wonderful things that went on that year, this year. Thank you, James. Sure. Hello. Um, so, yes, I was had the honor to uh, be summer school principal for the ESY program. It was a lot of fun. And for me, a really great way to get back in touch directly with the students, um, which is, you know, my whole reason for being here. So it was really nice. Um, I had a lot of support, as you can see, with our staff overview. Um, there were just as many as adults uh, as there were students. So it was a lot of fun for me to work in that capacity and, and be able to um, manage everything in the schedules um, and just to have all the support, uh, it, was, it was great. Um, these are just some pictures uh, of some of the summer learning that happened and some of the activities that the teachers uh, put on for the students. Uh, it was very engaging and uh, the school climate was very positive. Uh, some of our teachers uh, did activities together, um, which was really great to see the students in, interacting. Um, we were always together during recess time, so that was fun. 
um, to have everybody play together and do different games and, and interact from different school sites. So it was a really great way for these students to make new friends and make new connections and work with different adults that you know work around our district during the school year. Uh, some more pictures of academics and other fun stuff. Uh, some experiments were <laughs> happening. <laughs> it was scientific, I promise. Uh, lots of fun, lots of cleaning. And good thing we had also custodial support for days like this. <laughs> uh, we also you know, had some classes do some garden work and just really have a good time and, and hanging out. And um, you know, like again, we, we had a lot, of, a lot of interactions and intermingling between all the students, which was really positive to see. Some other uh, program highlights were we piloted a sensory room uh, just to kind of see what it would be like. This would be a, a room that was filled with different types of objects or lighting um, options for students to uh, receive rewards for good behavior or um, at some times, you know, it's hard to be in school and during the summer, so we had some meltdowns. So that was also a room for them to go and just really regulate self-regulate and um, it was it was really interesting to see how different uh, staff used it and how different um, you know students started to look forward to it and so that was great to pilot and our school psychologist uh, collected data and you know we plan to figure out how to move forward with some some of our school sites this year if um, you know it's something that they can benefit from and having on their campus um, so that was great. We also uh, had these teachers were using the new, the unique curriculum, um, so that's it was really interactive and engaging. Students were able to learn on the iPads and um, communicate with their you know different tools, and uh, that was really interesting for me to see directly. I don't really get to see the direct work of this, so this is new to our district, so it was really great to see life skills. We had baking. We had. Um, you know, that there's a lot of projects that were happening every day. And so that was also great to see um, students, you know, making food together and eating together and being a community. Um, there was lots of food. And then, like, you know, the picture previously, some science activities with different teachers and different grade levels. And that was it for me. So um, I will pass it on to Jennifer. So I ran the Big Left Inspiring Summers program at Jefferson. Uh, this year, this sum past summer, we moved to three sites. The year before, we were at two sites, so we grew a whole additional site. Um, we also grew from a K-1, and this past summer, we were a K-2. We had 470 scholars in our program, and we had them five days a week from 8.30 to 4.30. So we had all the families commit to an eight-hour day for all 470 kids, which was we thought was gonna be a little daunting, especially for the incoming Ks, but everybody survived and we made it. Um, and they actually ended up having a really great time and it really helped prepare them for the longer day in kindergarten for regular school year as well. We started every morning with a family breakfast. We had not only the scholars, but grandma or grandpa or auntie or uncle or mom or dad or whoever could join them for breakfast and that was hosted. Um, we fed them lunch, we fed them an afternoon snack and of course, we did all of this with the collaboration of many people that helped at San Mateo County Library, Bell, the Daily City Peninsula Partnership, Silicon Valley Community Foundation, of course, Raising a Reader, the Bay Area Discovery Museum, all took a hand in making this program successful. Every site was, um, was able to go on two field trips. They either went to a county park, some went to the Academy, uh, California Academy of Sciences, and others went to Curie Odyssey all had a super great time. And there was many different field trips that actually came onto our campus as well. We had Save Nature, we had Magic Dan, we had Brighter Bites, which was a dental facility that came on and taught us all how to brush our teeth and keep up with our dental hygiene. We had Jump for Joy come in and visit us. And our mornings were filled with a literacy-based curriculum. They had three and a half hours of literacy every morning. Uh, lots of reading, phonemic awareness, literacy centers, and they were all run by our JESD teachers. And then in the afternoon session, it always began with yoga. They had yoga every day uh, in every classroom, all the scholars, and that was kind of our break between the morning session, after lunch, and heading into our afternoon session is, was always started with a 30 minutes of yoga. And they did it, they did a great job. 
Um, all of the activities in the afternoon were STEM-based activity. All ran through the San Mateo County Library and the Bay Area Discovery Museum. They did units such as force and friction. They did units on creative chemistry. They did a unit on community building and growth mindset, all of which we are focusing also on regular school year at Jefferson. Um, each site had events also that incorporated their families. We had a career day at Thomas Edison where they actually came dressed in what they wanted to be when they grew up. Um, we had multicultural celebrations and National Learning Day is in the middle of July for some reason, but we celebrated National Learning Day. Um, and then we also had a pretty active Facebook page that also helped incorporate the parents and the community. And at the end of the summer, so many parents posted nice thank you messages to us and um, hoping that we'll be back next year or next summer. And even this parent that posted this picture here, she even put a little collage together and it's, you can't really see, but it says thank you to the big lift and she posted it there for us. We also, um, and these again were just other thank yous that were posted for us. Along on the Thomas Edison site, we added, we piloted a program called SL345, which is a summer learning program for third, fourth, and fifth graders. We were able to invite 75 third, fourth, and fifth graders to join that pilot program. And their morning ran very similar, similarly to the Bliss program, where it was all literacy-based in the morning. And then in the afternoon, instead of staying on campus at Thomas Edison, um, and doing the Bay Area Discovery Museum, they had, we actually escorted them across the street to Fernando Rivera, where they picked up on the Think Together program with the older kids. And I will pass that over to Rochelle to talk more about that. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Rochelle Pimentel Ewan, and I had the privilege and honor of being the summer school principal for the Math Acceleration Program for rising sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, as well as the Think Together Enrichment Program for third through eighth grade. I was able to great work with a great group of teachers, as well as teacher assistants, after school enrichment staff, and a fun, energetic group of young people this summer. Um, just a special thanks to Alice Alden and Winnie Fong of A-Learn, as well as Heather Morgan of Think Together, since they helped me put this PowerPoint together with all the pictures and slides that you will see. Um, for A-Learn, 102 selected students were in two rising sixth grade classes, a rising seventh grade class, and a rising eighth grade class. These students were selected based on their performance on the SBAC in hopes to boost their mathematical proficiency level. Four teachers from the Jefferson Elementary School District, along with four college students who worked as teacher assistants, received training in growth mindset, the Pearson Math Navigator Program, use of Khan Academy, and the resource area for teaching, aka RAFT, um, for journal exercises and STEM activities. Summer school for the older students were, was pretty much the same as Big Lift. It was a four hour morning from 8.30 to 12.30, and it had 19 days of programming. So they each grade level worked with two modules or two units. And sixth grade worked with equivalent fractions and geometry. Seventh grade worked with, with positive rational numbers and ratios and rates. Eighth grade worked with expressions and equations, as well as patterns and graphs. In addition to the Pearson Math Navigator curriculum, which is what you see up there, the growth mindset activities and online Khan Academy exercises and video tutorials, tutorials hands-on inquiry-based RAF STEM activities were also taught to students. Students also received six college readiness lessons taught by the teacher assistants who are the college students. The TAs talked to the students about their experiences and the process they went through in order to be accepted into college. The TAs were from UC Berkeley, UC Riverside, and University of Michigan, and many of them were first-generation college students. Through ALEARN, students and families also attended a college inspiration event with Yolan Melbourne, who is part of <coughs> ALEARN, and an end of the program event featuring students who spoke in front of all the families, as well as a TA speaker, a teacher speaker, and ALEARN's VP of Development, of, um, her name is Sharon Ogborn. She is also a product of Jefferson Elementary School District, mm -hmm. and she came to speak about her experiences here and how she's gone on to become VP of this company. Rising sixth through eighth graders also participated in a field trip to San Francisco State University. So the goal of each of the lessons and programs and activities was to help move students from basic to proficient level on the designated mathematical 
concepts. And as you can see, there was much growth in all four of the math classes. And student feedback and reflection is reflected above that the students enjoyed the summer math program, as you can see by some of their reflection and feedback that they turned in as well. I'll give you a second to read through some of that before I change the slide. Next, we have Think Together, which was the enrichment program for the after school, and they focused on um, STEM curriculum as well as club curriculum, which is more youth development, and a physical activity uh, curriculum called Fulcrum. There are 137 mathematicians and scholars that came together to become elementary pirates and middle school survivors. So they had this theme all summer long. And the first day, all the leaders were dressed up as pirates, and they had pirate names, which was fun, and I couldn't remember all of them, but I do know that they also used pirate jargon. Um, their day started from 12.30 to 4.30, and they had 20 days of programming. And they had on site a lot of folks to help with the program. We had one quality assurance coach, two site supervisors, one site assistant, and 10 program leaders who ran the program. And some of them used, I heard all summer, who needs to go behind the tree? And I couldn't figure out what they were talking about, and I just had to ask. And apparently behind the tree for the middle school survivors is who needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and okay. for our elementary kids, it was um, different jobs, as you can see in that posting. It's kind of blurry and small. But one of the jobs was the poop deck monitor, which was also their bathroom monitor. So I wanted to just say poop deck monitor because I didn't think I'd ever have the chance to say that to you all <laughs> in the future. <laughs> um, also, <coughs> I think together had high student engagement throughout this summer. They participated in lots of hands-on activities, as you can see this STEM base. The one furthest to the left is students making catapults. Um, the middle is where they're designing catapults and trying to figure out what would work best. And then the zombie apocalypse unit was also something they were working on, which was a water filtration unit. And it was all fun. The physical activity fulcrum team building unit um, focused on boosting students' confidence, enthusiasm for learning, resiliency, as well as collaborative behavior and conflict resolution. And it was also their way of combating summer obesity and weight gain. And the one on the right is the end of it, like every um, closing day. They'd have an activity outside together and come together as a middle school. That was fun to watch. They also had field trips. Think Together's summer learning program participated in two field trips. One was a field trip to the element, for the elementary school students to the Aquarium of the Bay in San Francisco. And another was an on-site field trip with um, a game vendor from uh, Games to You, and they are actually using catapults in real life. So they had the Angry Birds catapult, which you can see to the left, and then they're launching water balloons and making water balloon catapults there and then some of our students who took the field trip to San Francisco State University. And they also had spirit days. This is the crazy hair day in Christmas in July. You can see her hair is made into a donut, um, which was kind of fun. But in, with the fun, they also had success folders for elementary school students. And each day they would practice um, for a few minutes um, fluency passages, sight words, and math facts. What their data showed was that students grew an average flu one fluency level for the duration of the summer using RAS kids. Um, students also grew an average of 58 sight words. Um, they don't take all their credit because they know Big Lift did a lot of literacy work in the morning. And students also grew one average uh, math level through by the end of summer. And this is all of the students saying thank you. Thank you very much. Questions. Any questions? Do we have any questions? Comments? I have a comment. I was struck. I saw one of the things where there were, you had the page there with the um, comments from the students about the things, and one of them saying that I, I, don't, no, I can't get it exactly right, but that basically that I, the best thing was that my teacher believed in me. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, you know, we all know that to be true, but it's great to see uh, go, yep, <laughs> it works. Um, 
this is really fantastic and the, and the results and, and having some data from that with the pre and post testing and stuff to see that it's really working and clearly the students were engaged, the continuation, you know, attendance, um, you know, that it really seems like it fits exactly what I was hoping for when I brought information back from uh, CSBA a few years ago about this is what we really ought to be doing for inspiring summers. So congratulations. Yeah. I want to echo the comments of Dr. Douglas that <clears throat> sounds like they, kids had an amazing summer and that all the programs actually helped um, help their kids for this year and for future years. So just want to say thanks for everybody who helped that and thanks for the presentation tonight as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I too was impressed with the data, but I think what, what um, I found most impressive was seeing the staff and the students look like they were very engaged and having a good time, but obviously learning and I think it's a huge relief for families as well to be able to have that summer support so commend all of you for taking part I, I actually want to want to hear and or see how some of the summer happenings are integrated throughout the school year I don't know what that looks like and what we have going on right now I know that's probably a question for our superintendent and also Ms. McCulloch but I'm, I'm I think it's wonderful that we have that here. People talk about summers and what doesn't happen, but I take great pride in seeing that this is what's happening here in our district. So thank you all. Well, I just want to thank you for coming tonight and showing us and telling us. And you can tell by your enthusiasm and the children as well that it was a great program. Um, I also looked at some of the things that the children wrote on their comments, and the one I kind of picked out a little bit that I liked was the child that said, um, I, when I redid something that I didn't do right and I got it right, how, how mm -hmm. good he felt about it, or he, mm -hmm. she, I don't know. I don't think I knew if it was a girl or a boy. But, um, and that's really important because um, you sometimes have to make a mistake to get it right. And that some children are afraid to speak out and to, to say something because they're afraid they might be wrong. And it's nice to know you can be wrong because it's part of learning. So I kind of like that, and the child themselves said it. So, But thank you very much because, I mean, we heard a lot about this program. We weren't sure how it was going to go. But I think it's, we're saying, yeah, I think we agree it's got to come back mm -hmm. and grow more. But thank you for, for some of you giving up your summer to do this is a lot too. So thank you for that. And thank everybody else who also did whatever they did to make it a success. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks to everyone. Okay. Well, Actually, I have one question for Mr. Vidalis, probably, um, and we might not know the answer yet. Are we going to be able to expand it for next year? More students? Um, I don't know yet. Um, I was going to mention this in superintendent comments, so I'll mention oh. it now. <laughs> um, the Big Lift program in particular was partially funded by the um, Social Innovation Fund, which is a federal program out of um, Washington, D.C. And in last October, when they did their, their budget, um, they, that was one of the programs that was eliminated. Oh. So uh, the, the county and was expecting to apply for another three-year grant um, to be able to collect six years' worth of data. Um, so at, at this point, um, we're sort of putting our heads together to figure out how um, we can fund that and if we can have expansion or not. Um, so we will get back to you on that. Um, th the nice thing about having the, the, the big lift, Inspiring Summers, um, at the same site as the middle school was that you can integrate a lot of, a lot of things and can provide that after programming experience for more kids. Um, because the big lift only provided we, the after programming for K through second graders. So we provided the third through fifth graders with sixth and eighth graders at Fernando. So having those two sites back to back really supported that. And, um, you know, getting back to Ms. Manufo's um, question around um, how much of this is being integrated in the school year, I, I can't say I, I know for certain, but the fact that we used our own teachers um, that were teaching during this time um, leads me to believe that some of the practices that they learned and some of the messages that they were um, sharing with students will also translate to the classroom. This year, um, Think Together is a, is a partner of ours um, in our after school programs. I think they work at four, maybe five of our schools after school. And so they obviously will carry forth some of those activities. And many of the students that participated are students of theirs during the school year and the after school program. So, okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so let's go on to item seven, communications, and uh, board members' acknowledgments and accommodations. Would Would you like to start? I don't really have any other than to commend our summer program people for being okay. fantastic, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, glad to see. As far as I've been able to gather, the start of the school year is going well. I see the. Um, students back in Moss at uh, Westlake Library after school, mm -hmm. behaving like junior high students. Um, <clears throat> but it's good to see them back there doing homework. And at the beginning of the year, they're always very engaged with homework. It's nice to see. Mm -hmm. and um, I, last week, I went to um, back to school night at Dan Webster. Um, there's a great turnout, and I just want to commend everybody there and at all the other schools for hosting it. I can only make one. So. I can only talk about one of them, but there was a great turnout. All the classrooms were full, and lots of parents were there. The parking lot was completely full. So I just want to thank everybody there for uh, leading that event, and as well as all the other schools. Okay. Yeah, I like um, to see. I, I like that I'm seeing a lot of the kids back in school, um, engaged, and. Um, I actually had visited um, with a group of students and three schools that they came from were JFK, uh, MP Brown, and uh, SBA. And it was um, a random conversation about gratitude and, and they said they were having these conversations in their classrooms which I thought perfect timing considering everything that's happening throughout our country and a lot of the unfortunate tragedies. But to hear these young minds speak of how grateful they are and that um, they're, they're having these discussions in their classrooms with their peers. I think for me, it, um, it was, for me, it just left an impression that one of them said, um, she was a third grader, and she actually said, um, you know, I, I, I'm very grateful to be able to just be here today. And I'm like, what grade are you in? <laughs> you know, because I, you know, sometimes we get caught up in our daily lives and we forget to be present and her comment reminded me to just be present and I was just pretty amazed that she was a third grader and was able to share that and that was a huge takeaway for me two weeks ago so um, just grateful to be back and we don't always get to see everyone at the end of the meeting so I just want to continue to wish everyone well um, you know there's so much going on in our country and the hope is that if we ever have the opportunity to give back, especially to those who have unfortunately fall victim of um, in Houston and Miami and throughout the world, that we might be able to continue to push that message throughout. But thank you. Well, just want to welcome everybody back as well. And I know we have exciting stuff happening. And so we enjoy it. And I'm glad everybody came today. So. Like you say, you, what, you don't want to say at the end of the meeting because you're all gone. <laughs> but thank you for all coming and thank you f for all the things you do for our children in the district. So let's move on to uh, correspondence and superintendent's comments. Um, I said most of them already. Um, <laughs> one thing is um, we will have back to school night at our middle schools on September 21st. Um, the Thomas Edison parent and teacher group are going to capitalize on that and they're having their food truck fundraiser at the same time as back to school night so families that are hungry can walk across the parking lot and, <laughs> and get some food and I'm sure the smells will be wonderful so if you happen to be available stop by Thomas Edison as well. Now those children are really engaged look at that. Yeah. <laughs> That's great thank, thank you for sharing that. Okay, administrator's comments. Yeah, I of course went to the back to school night at Daniel Webster, my alma mater, and went to all my old classrooms. Uh, that's always nice, I enjoy doing that. And to uh, Fernand, um, Thomas Edison as well, and um, as Mr. Koo said, had a really big turnout. That cafeteria was packed with people. And that was very nice to see. Also, I want to remind everybody, uh, please sign up for free and, or, or put your application in for free and reduced lunch. Um, if you um, qualify, we, we want you to get your free lunch or your reduced lunch. And if you don't qualify, you'll be automatically entered into our drawing that um, we have prizes from Sodexo for anybody who puts in an application, whether you qualify or not. So please put in your application for your free and reduced. Um, every school site 
will have the um, applications there. So, yeah, I went to a few schools the other night. I went to George Washington, Woodrow Wilson, Susan B. Anthony, and John F. Kennedy for back to school night. And, you know, you catch each school at a different time. Some you're walking in as families are breaking out of the multi-use room or, you know, the little talks going on. You know, you remember yourself up on the stage there. So it was nice to have that flexibility to move around. And you just really, you know, you got to remember what a small community this is. I'm starting to see families of former students of mine whose kids are over at schools and you hey Valenny you know that kind of stuff it's just wild how many people I bump into that are now adults having students in our in our, our, our schools so you know I, I think back on my 20 years or so here it, it was great really enjoy myself I also attended uh, four sites in about an hour and a half so it was <laughs> quite a quick <laughs> dash I went to um, FDR Tobias Garden Village and Westlake. Great turnout at all the sites. Um, but I really would just want to thank all of our staff that worked the summer programs. Some of our staff that worked the summer programs had a very short summer, um, especially Miss LaRock. Um, and she was kind of the coordinator of all of it, and she did a fantastic job. So I really want to thank her for that, as well as um, all of our teachers, our aides, everyone that worked in the summer program. Um, it was really engaging, a lot of good feedback. And, you know, we'll see as time goes on how it helped our students perform and improve student learning outcomes okay so we got everybody there well I have to share that um, somebody stopped me this this morning when I went to the post office and said oh did you used to work at M. Pauline Brown <laughs> no that was my sister, sister. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but anyway every now and then you'll run into someone and it, it brings back some memories but it's kind of cute okay so um, persons wishing to address the board, I do have one. Uh, do we have any more? Okay. So I'd like to call on uh, Lasha. Is it Scanlon? Scranton. Oh, Scranton. Would you like to come up and speak at the microphone? Good evening. Good, Good evening. evening. I am um, the parent of a child who is a special ed child, pre K attending at this point Thomas Edison and by the way my child did go to the summer program he had a great time and we really enjoyed it um, at the end of the summer I was informed maybe one day before summer school ended that our, my child would not be going back to Westlake Elementary that he would be transferred or the whole special ed program is trans for the pre ks is transferred to Thomas Edison um, at that point, it sounded okay. I didn't think too much about it. I thought, okay. Well, school began, and we showed up at Thomas Edison. And I have to say that I was extremely disappointed. The children left a facility where they had pretty much all of their amenities were inclusive. Their bathroom was within the classroom. The play yard was right outside of the classroom. Around the, a little bit around the structure, there was the part that's been completed with a blacktop where they could play and whatever. When they moved to the new school, and I went there on the first day, there was basically nothing. The bathroom is outside of the classroom. It's not really for children. The playground is across the field for the children. It's just the whole setup was different. But what really bothered me about this was that as a parent, I was uninformed. Had I been informed ahead of time, then I would have probably paid more attention to it and went to that school to see kind of what it was like. But unfortunately, and I've met with the principal and the teacher, and let me say that the principal's great. I really like her. The teacher is great. The classroom, the, they're the same teachers that they had previously. So that's all fine. But what bothered me was that, to me, it didn't feel like a transparent type transfer. When you're going to move people's children like that, you should let them know. And we should have been included in the process. I just think we were left out, and I don't like the way that it was done. I have been in Daly City for 45 years, and this is not my first child in the school system. As a matter of fact, this is my grandchild. Mm -hmm. And so I was just disappointed in what happened. And so my concern is, is that if they're left in this facility, will it come up to standard, or will it come up to par, or what's the reason for it? Oh, I should have said this before we announced uh, this item, but uh, we can 
listen to all of your concerns. Mm -hmm. We really cannot respond to answer. it because it's not on the agenda, so okay. to speak. But we definitely will direct our superintendent and staff to look into this. Yeah, okay. Ms. Granton wouldn't mind if she leaves her contact information with Ms. Kovari, we can get a hold of her. Yeah, sure. Okay. Well. Thank you. But thank you for coming and thank bringing you. it up. Thank you. Okay. And this one is uh, uh, Lanasha, I always say it wrong. Anushka. 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 <laughs> I gotta say it better. Uh, Takla. She's a teacher. I know her very well by seeing her. <laughs> Great teacher. Good evening, members of the board, district leadership, all the teachers and community members here. Um, I'm actually here to thank you for um, establishing a special fund to help stabilize our incomes, and that fund that is for health and welfare. Um, I'm assuming that's going to stabilize our workforce as well. The other thing I'm, I'm here to speak to is to celebrate our labor management collaboration, um, because when we work constructively together for solutions, we accomplish many things. So we've um, established the foundation for our community schools along the Mission Corridor um, in conjunction with the Jefferson Union and High School District and our, our sister labor union, 1481. Um, we've established parent education nights that have now been rolled into our LCAP. Um, and working families have stood with us over and over again to um, pass legislation to stabilize our school funding, our public school funding. So um, families have helped us pass Prop 30, Prop 55, Measure T to just name a few. And so as you go into closed session this evening, um, I'd like you to really consider our counter proposal through the lens of working families standing together because we are just stronger for it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So I don't think I have any other speakers, so we'll move on. Thank you very much for speaking. Okay, so let's go to our consent agenda. Do we have a motion on that? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. So we'll, you two are almost on time every time. <laughs> We're okay, we'd like to have a, a roll call on this one. Mr. Ali? Aye. Miss Leah Inga Anawai? Aye. Mr. Ku? Aye. Dr. Douglas? Aye. Mrs. Brizuela? Aye. Okay, so now we can just move down to F. Jefferson Elementary School District response to 2016-17 grand jury report. And it's, uh, yep. Bernie? Yes, I believe at the end of June, the grand jury came out with a report around um, questioning how San Mateo County schools have responded to the assembly bill, or whatever, the legislature's bill. Um, so they had a couple of uh, questions that they wanted us to respond to. We worked with uh, our county council to respond to them as um, they were true to our district. And uh, it's attached as your, in your background of material and um, does require a board uh, vote to submit it to the grand jury. Okay. So if there's no questions, can we have a motion or is there any questions? I thought it was all self-explanatory. Okay. So we have a motion then? Though I will move then that we um, approve our district response to the 2016-17 grand jury report, how San Mateo County Public Schools responded to the epinephrine auto-injector law. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passed. Mm -hmm. So, G, now we have resolution number 2017-2009. Dash 13B, Jefferson Elementary School District Board of Education unwavering support for undocumented students and their families. Yes, just over a week ago, um, we heard news from um, the Attorney General that um, this administration was going to revoke the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Um, and so, needless to say, that caused a lot of consternation among um, people who, who know about that, who know individuals who benefit from that. Um, 
Mr. Ku uh, reached out to me um, that day and asked, can we, can we have something that we could um, resolve as a board? And so I reached out to county council and San Mateo County Office of Education. We got a draft and um, I updated it for our district. Um, Mr. Ku helped to embellish it and I think make it one of the best written resolutions any school board is, is gonna be writing this on this topic. Um, it actually was shared with other school boards to consider. So, um, so that is our response. I will, if passed, I will um, send it to our representatives, um, Nancy Pelosi, Jackie Spear. I'll even go to Anna Eshoo. Um, I will send it to Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, um, Senate uh, President, whatever they're called, Mr. McConnell. Um, I'm not certain yet if I will send it any further up. But <laughs> at least those people who are responsible for making this happen, um, and it does urge them to take action on this soon. So. Okay. okay. So do we have a motion on this? I'll make a motion to approve resolution number 2017-09-13B, Jefferson Elementary School District Board of Education's unwavering support for and documented students and their families. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, aye. So it's a resolution. Oh, do you want to do it? Oh, wait. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do, do it, it just because the we do that. Way. Yes. Yeah. Mr. We'll Ali? Aye. Ms. Leah Inga Anawai? Aye. Mr. Ku? Aye. Dr. Douglas? Aye. Mrs. Brizuela? Aye. And we we'll we'll even put someone's all, name in it? Send, it. send it all the way to the top. You'll be wasting your breath at the top. But, you know. <laughs> Never, never say anything. Okay, so let's move on to uh, curriculum and instruction. And I think we, we don't have anything. And then business financial, I know we have time. Let's see. We have the unaudited actuals. Oh. Oh, did I just didn't try again? Oh, yours looks different than mine. Oh, never mind. No, no, I got a different looking paper. Okay, so C, financial year, yeah, you're ready, 2016-17, unaudited actuals. So, we have the floor. Good Thank evening. You. So, another year has closed. They go by so fast. <laughs> um, and, of course, the unaudited actuals comes to you once a year after we close the books, and um, we review them, and um, you, you are to approve the unaudited actuals prior to September 15th, or no later than September 15th. And uh, they go to our, our external auditors. They will audit them. Uh, they will send it to the state by December 15th. And then we will bring the audited financials to you either in December or January, most likely January, for your approval. So this is a summary of all the funds. Um, we have these are all different funds. The general fund up here is a general fund restricted, unrestricted, and a general fund restricted. These are the fund balances that we started out with at the beginning of 2016-17, so that's July 1st, 2016. We had these ex revenues, these expenditures, and this is the end fund balance. So since the second interim, when you last saw this, um, we expected our projected end balances to be this these amounts here. And so the difference between what they are, um, are here. And this is what I'm going to explain to you tonight, um, what these differences are made up of. Because throughout the year, I explained to you um, how the budget changes. So at the, from the first interim, I explained how the budget changes from the adopted budget to the first interim, at the second, from the first interim to the second interim. And the third, which is now the unaudited actuals, instead of comparing one budget to the next budget, we're comparing the budget that was in at the second interim to the ending actuals. So we're no longer comparing it to a budget. Um, and of course, our budget is for what we're authorized to spend, not for exactly what we think we're gonna spend. So I'll explain to you um, what these differences are as we move forward. Um, and I'll also explain to you, show you, with the end balance, how that's broken out. Something I want to show you here is this page, just to 
because there's a lot of numbers on that other page. And for the most part, what we the district runs off of is the general fund. And mostly the general fund unrestricted is what we have the most control over. So um, we have the revenues for the 16-17 school year were $50.5 million. And the expenditures were basically $50.5 million. But the revenues were mildly higher than the expenditures by 87,000, 88,000 rounded dollars. So we did not deficit spend. We have a little bit of a surplus. Um, I would like to let you know that included in these revenues up top here is a million three hundred thousand of one-time funds. Mm -hmm. So that that is That's in there. True. If we didn't have that, then clearly we would be deficit spending. Um, the problem with one-time funds is. We can't plan on them for the future because we don't know if we're going to be getting them or not. So when you take this $87 million, $88 million, we have the beginning fund balance. We add whatever excess we have of revenues over expenditures, or we subtract out any expenditures over revenues to come to our new fund balance. So, and just so you see, this, um, this excess that we have is equivalent to 0.017 percent, so a little bit less than two tenths of one, of one percent of the total expenditures in the general fund. Um, so I'm going to show you now where this 12 million dollars, how how it's laid out. There's the 12 million there. So we have five percent reserved for economic uncertainty. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and then. Um, we have these prepaid expenditures and some cash. These are um, other designations. There's a whole slide, uh, another slide that I'll show you what those other designations are. And this is the unappropriated amount. So we have 7.8 million here, totaling the 12 million. This amount, the 3 million, is the, in the restricted general fund. So combined, restricted and un unrestricted, we have a fund balance of $15 million. This is the same information, but in a pie. So you can see how it just visually kind of looks nicer and has nice colors. But um, I'm going to explain to you that we have the unappropriated and we have the reserve for economic uncertainty. Those are pretty clear. Um, I'm going to explain to you what's in this uh, restricted end fund balance, what it's made out of, up of, and what this um, other designations is made up of. This is a very small amount, as I said. It's some cash and some prepaid expenses. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. So first off, what I'm going to explain is the differences between the budget at second interim and what our unaudited actuals are, what our actual expenditures and revenues were. So since the second interim and, we're, and closing out, our revenues have increased by five, increased by 588,000. Our expenditures decreased by one and a half million, and our contributions to restricted funds decreased by a million dollars. That's what's making up that earlier number that you saw of 3.2 million dollars. That we um, difference between the budget and the actuals. So all these will be explained to you as well in the next three slides. So first, I want to go to the revenues to get to that page. So you can see the um, revenue limit amount. So this is from the LCFF. Um, has a very small change from what was actually budgeted, only $27,000. Million, $27, and that comes from a little bit of an additional gap funding. We went up from 55.28% to 56.08. And we have, this is the part that is more distressing, um, a reduction of ADA um, of 0.96. And I, I say this is um, something to bring up because we are facing declining enrollment now. We faced it last year. We had declining enrollment protection for the one year. We had about 46 fewer students last year than the previous year. And at this point for this year, we're at 201 fewer stu students, fewer than last year. So for this current year, we will have declining enrollment protection that will equal our income for, to last year's. But in the future, if it doesn't come back up, we will have 
uh, declining enrollment protection only for the one year this year. So 202 students um, at our, our rate of ADA, which is about 96.5%, would equal $1.8 million per year lost revenues because of reduced students. Just want to let you know that. So that's a big deal. Um, we have an uh, increase in federal revenues for uh, Medi-Cal reimbursements because we don't count that until we receive it um, because the feds have been very, very slow to, to fund the Medi-Cal. So um, when we receive the dollars, then we put them in. Um, the state mandated, mandated costs came in a little bit higher than we expected. Um, and the bigger amount was uh, other income. So we have interest income that came in $56,000 higher. Um, the donations are site donations. So these are to our school sites, um, lease income. The biggest one by far is the PG&E rebates. Um, PG&E for our solar panels was going to rebate us over a certain number of years. Uh, they broke it out into, I don't remember, five, seven years, something like that. Um, and they sent us a letter this year and said, we're not going, we're going to give you everything now. So uh, where we had it budgeted for the out years, they gave it to us now instead. So that was an additional $284,000. Great, we received it last year, but now we don't get it in these years. So it's, uh, we got it early. Um, these combined ended up, the, that's that $588,000 additional revenues that we received. As for the expenditures, the majority of these expenditures, more than half, is site carryovers. Um, but I'll go through these for you. Uh, the certificated salaries, uh, for the site carryovers, it's basically um, about $450,000 uh, in site carryovers. But then we had um, under-budgeted in sub substitute costs. So um, combined, it ended up being $218,000 less expenditures. But again, most of it is site carryover, both um, discretionary and for the supplemental and concentration grant carryovers. Um, and each year they get the carryovers, but each year they're pretty much spending their new allotment. And so in a way, if they get, if like say we give out a um, million dollars in site funds, and there's 200 that plus they get $200,000 in carryover that they had, for the year they're spending the million. So then they spend the 200,000 carryover, 800,000 of the new, and then they end up having 200,000 carryover again. So each year it kind of carries over. In a way, it's kind of like their savings, their reserve. So if they get cut. Next year, if we have to do some cuts, they have some reserves, just like we have some reserves. So when you see that carryover, it's kind of nice that they have it. Um, the uh, classified, basically, we've kind of been out of a custodian throughout the year, one after the other. It's, it's been um, not the same one, but continuously um, missing a sub. And then also some site carryovers. The, Benefits, they're actually following the, uh, for the most part, they follow, since we have less spent in the certificated and the classified salaries, we also have less in benefits. Um, and then, uh, so we have the STRS, the PERS, all of the different benefits that are associated with that. And when we budget, uh, for instance, when we budget classified substitutes, we budget them as they're, they're going to get Social Security, they're going to get the Medi-Cal, Medicare, and um, they don't always get that. Sometimes they get something else. So, but we, we budget it in case that's what they get. Um, supplies, again, mostly carryover, discretionary carryover of um, $300,000 there. They also have the donation carryover, close to 100000 and um, the furn site furniture. We had budgeted site furniture, and um, one of them was for Westlake, and we did not have to get them for Westlake because there was a, a little extra uh, furnishings from other sites that were able to be put together for Westlake. And then also we had budgeted for TRP in the general fund, but that ended up going to the bond. 
um, since we were, uh, they were all for the new classrooms and such. So we ended up having a $217,000 in the furnishings that didn't um, get spent on that. And then for the services, again, the majority of that is carryover, uh, site discretionary carryover, so about um, $230,000. And then also, and, and then uh, from donations as well, uh, and then also district-wide from the uh, Supplemental and Concentration Grant, we had planned on having a, a math PD and also um, some PD on school to home. And what happens, we ended up with a, a sub shortage. And because we couldn't get the subs to do it, um, I guess there was a, more of an online kind of PD. And so we were able to save some funds there. And so that's what's making that up. Uh, this is just a very small amount, mostly indirect cost. and some supplementing of food service. So in total, that we have the one point, almost 1 1.6 million um, of savings. We move on to the contributions. So this is that third part that affected um, why we have a difference between our budget and our actuals. But again, the biggest reason for having it is the budget is approved spending level and you know, we hope not to actually spend all of that. And the actuals are what we're actually spending. So um, for the contributions, so this is where we contribute from the unrestricted to the restricted. And the, the two big ones here are the special ed. Um, we contributed 756,000 less than was budgeted. And then also for titles two and titles three, about $300,000. Those are the two big ones, and the reasons for those, in special ed, um, we had less tuition to um, the county office of ed. The county office tells us how much they're going to charge us per student. And then at the end of the year, they reconcile, and they're budgeting higher expenditures as well. And so in the end, we didn't have as much uh, their, their bill to us was lower than expected. So the tuition change and also for interdistrict transfers. So that was saved us $142,000. We also had a, there was a legal settlement that was resolved. Uh, and so we had budgeted for that in case it didn't come through. And that was um, done too. And also the non-public schools, we saved about $195,000. And doing that is we felt that we were going to be placing a couple additional students into um, a non-public school. But as we are able to open up our special day classes and service the students ourselves, or we're able to service the students all along, or starting at a younger age, we hope that we can have fewer and fewer kids in non-public schools. It's a lot less expensive than to um, put them in non-public schools. $195,000 basically covers about two children, two students. Um, and that's if we don't have really high transportation expenses, because that can be extremely high. Um, and then uh, that, that made up the majority of it. But also for revenues, um, we have a high cost pool. So the county office of ed, there's this high cost pool. So any student that costs us over a certain threshold amount students that cost us over, I think it's like um, 78,000 or close to $80,000 per student. Um, we can submit the overage to the county office of ed. They collect all these overages and then they pay us out whatever percentage they can pay. So if they can pay us 100% of that, that amount, it depends on all the districts combined. And so we don't know what that's going to be until the end of the year. So we were able to get an additional $207,000 $207, of reimbursement from the county office of ed for a, from a high cost pool. And then also there was some um, prior year adjustments. So in other words, 15, 16 year adjustments from the state from another cost pool. And that was 25000 so we were able to bring in another $232,000 in revenues, and we had um, 527,000 fewer in expenditures. And that's what made, made this up. Um, and as for the um, titles two and three, 
we had a couple teachers on special assignment that one went back into a classroom and um, the other one passed away. And so those positions were not um, filled again. And so that basically we didn't have to contribute as much to the title programs um, because of those savings. So those, those explain the difference of that $3.2 million difference between the, what we budgeted um, to be a over expenditure to um, what we actually spent. And then I said I was going to go over a couple parts of that pie. So here's one part of the pie where the, it's a locally restricted. So these donations, $126,000, these are donations that were given directly to school sites. Um, we, of course, manage the funds for them because they're not going to write their own checks. Right? So um, that's from that. And then the site carryovers are discretionary funds, $490,000, $491,000 for our 14 different sites combined. And then the supplemental and concentration grant fund carryover is 233000 So that makes up that $850,000 in that pie that you saw of um, end fund balance. And then there's the restricted end fund balance, or I showed it was like $3.2 million. And these are the different programs that contribute to that balance. Um, we have the maintenance, um, ongoing major maintenance account. And we're contributing, we have to contribute by law 3% to that account. So we're contributing about 1.7 million. And um, our expenditures are a little bit below that in the last couple of years, 1.5 and 1.4 million. But this year they've gone up and it's 1.7 million. So again, this is like a, this is kind of nice to have. Um, and actually, we do want this because as our facilities age, the things that the bond is not replacing, this, these are the funds that are supposed to replace it. So, you know, a million dollars is about two roofing projects. And then that, those funds are gone. Yeah. Lottery money, the, um, this is for instructional materials lottery. Um, we get about $300,000 per year. We've been saving it up. And this year, 17-18, we will be spending $886,000 of this amount. So we'll be spending approximately three years' worth of funds. Um, and we will be spending $1 million from that reserve that we put away for instructional materials. We'll be spending that this year as well. Um, and so, and then this educator effectiveness, this will be all spent up this year. So this makes up the $3.2 million. And then the one thing that's not included in that pie is the, um, the grant balances because a grant, we don't recognize a grant until we spend the money. That's the way the law is written. So when we spend $100,000, then we recognize revenues of $100,000. And so this doesn't make it into the fund balance. It's, it's considered like a prepayment to us. So it's a liability until we spend it. And so basically, for Title I, we have um, just under $300,000 in carryover. And we're only allowed to have 15% carryover. So um, that's it. That's that makes up the um, unaudited actuals, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So, do we have questions on the board? Huh? Huh? Mm. Huh? You didn't mention the unfunded liability. You know I was going to ask a question. Huh? <laughs> I'm waiting for you. <laughs> um, do you want to mention anything about that? The um, about pension, the unfunded I'm sorry. liability. About that, that last one. No, but unfunded pensions. Liabilities. Oh, unfunded liabilities. Um, Do we still need to be paying attention to that? So, what you're you're talking about the uh, post-employment benefits? Okay, yeah. And the post-employment benefits, right now we have eight million dollars put aside. Um, if we were to fund or put aside the full amount, it'd be fourteen million, approximately fourteen million dollars. Um, but that is for the long term. And so $8 million there is, it's a good amount to have for now. 
and uh, it's nothing's going to come due all at once. But we also have it, it's not in an irrevocable trust. So it's not in like Fund 71, which once it gets in there, you can't take it out. Um, where we have it in Fund, four, fund 20, Fund 20, um, it can be taken out if we need to use it in the future back in the general fund. That would require a resolution from the board to remove gotcha. that. But that is still intact. That was it. And on that list that you saw. So when so does that mean that we're okay for from now on, or is it every we have to keep continuing that? We don't have to put it in there. It's a it's um it's recognizing they want us they would like us to fully fund it. They would like us to put it in a trust, but if you put it in the trust, you cannot Can't you cannot it. take it out ever. Right. Yeah. And and to do that <laughs> takes the local control away from you that if you need to use those funds in the future to, for instance, um, spend down reserves potentially to support programs if in the future, if we stop getting one-time funds and if we have to, uh, uh, because of PERS and STRS costs are going up a lot, and if we have to like look at programs to reduce, you have the time to be able to review that because we have funds that we could move back in to support those programs until a logical decision is made as to what you would want to do. So, so far we're okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm not quite sure because I've heard a lot of places <laughs> okay going for really years anyway. It all depends on, on what kind perception. of funding we get and, and one-time funds. There's one thing, employees do need their retirement. And the economy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Too bad. Um, I don't think we have any. Have we? No. Okay, look. So let's see where I'm at. Thank you very much. You gave us an awful lot to read. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so need a motion? Yeah. I'd like to move that we approve the unaudited actuals. Uh, do we have to say the date? For fiscal year 2016 and 17. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Yay. Okay. okay. Now we can move on to number 11, certificated personnel, administrative resignation. All right. Well, unfortunate for us, but fortunately for the San Mateo County Office of Ed, our uh, principal Brian Allen from Woodrow Wilson did resign effective August 25th, uh, 2017. He and I actually were employed since the same date, September 3rd, 1998, <laughs> 19 years ago. And uh, we're requesting that uh, the board um, accept this resignation and that uh, an appropriate res resolution be prepared commending Mr. Allen for his years of service with the district. Okay. Motion? No. <laughs> but it, you know, the thing is, you can't say no. <laughs> okay. You can say Fine. it. But it's, it's I will move that we accept the resignation of Brian Allen, um, principal from Woodville Wilson, and that an appropriate resolution be prepared commending him for his service to our district. Do you have a second? I will only second for protocol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all going to miss him terribly, but at least, like you say, he'll, he'll be at the county where he'll be doing some good stuff. That will probably help us too. So, mm -hmm. okay, um, we have a, we have a roll call on this. All in favor? Aye. 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 I said the yeah, wrong word when I said roll call, well, but, but we don't actually need a roll call. <laughs> I'm still okay. in favor. No, I didn't mean to say that. Yeah. I meant to say <laughs> we have a vote. Okay. So that was in favor. So that passed. Yes. Let's move on to number thirteen. Board policies. Oh boy, we have a lot to read too. Okay. So. Yeah, so this is the, the second time that you've had these policies before you. Um, there were no revisions at the first reading. Um, if you happened to reread them and found something, uh, please let me know. Uh, we can um, adjust them prior to voting on them. I know I didn't say anything. I was thinking of you. <laughs> 
because I have nothing. <laughs> so, um, Dr. Douglas is now on the board policy subcommittee, so <laughs> all of the revisions are found early. Does, right? <laughs> <laughs> we hope. <laughs> And I know we really <coughs> don't have a lot to do with charter schools except kind of see what they're doing. But I was, I was looking at one of the, the um, what is it, page uh, E0420.41B, down below where it says item number 11B. So we're letting the, the, the teachers meet the qualifications by to be, become a teacher from, if they start in July 1st, to, uh, 2015, they have until 2020 to, to get up to par? Yeah, so that- Long um, time for poor kids? You know, like uh, this exemption also applies to our school district and applies to every public school in California. Mm -hmm. So um, most of the board policies are generally just mirrors of legislative um, yeah. laws. And so that, that, that is a requirement of the law. And we have that same waiver, and our TK teachers also yeah. um, are operating under that same provision. So, but that doesn't that doesn't, doesn't mean they all start that way, does it? No, just those that no. don't qualify. Um, yeah, just the ones who started after July first, twenty fifteen, need to meet those requirements. Because I just want to make sure we have our good teachers that are really ready to go, not just take four more years or five more years to learn. That just stood out to me, even though I've read it before. It's just like, how did I not feel bad about that before? I think that was the only one. Okay, so if there's no questions and no changes for this, can we have a vote on it? Motion? To approve it for a second reading. I'll make a motion to approve the second reading of the May 2016 CSB board policy revisions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay, it passed. Bring on the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Better do my okay, so. so now we'll go down to 14 board members, comments, reports and reflection on the board meeting guidelines. Would you like to start, Rebecca? Down here, um, okay, well, I was um, looking at the second one about respecting differences, that we will respect differences, deliberate and address process, not personalities, and um, it didn't really turn out to have any particular <laughs> challenges today, so we did great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Am I selected? We will work toward the future learning from the past. Um, that was in relation to um, all the great work we did this summer. And I thought that that tied in pretty well to the, the progress we've made so far and what we're trying to keep moving forward with. And I chose, we will keep our focus on the best interests of our students. And I, I believe we did that tonight and that we are continuing to do that. Yeah, I also chose we will keep our focus on the best interests interests of our students and yeah that's what we did tonight and we always do so thank you well as i looked at these and we said we didn't have to really pick just one mm -hmm. but we did very well on almost everything and a lot of it probably had a lot to do with the subject matter but um it was exciting and a great meeting to hear so much about the summer program and oops, we got some and then um, also the good that we're doing, um, approving everything else. So um, I pick them all. I took them all. We did good. Okay. Pat on the back, everybody. <laughs> okay. So uh, there's anything else? That, any reports or anything we have? No. We just got started. Oh, he didn't fall off a chair, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Something. Okay, so 15 persons wishing to address the board on the closed session item. Okay, did I put it here? No, you took this one. This one. Ah, where's Mr. Pink? On the bottom? So, where is he? Paul Hagen. There you You moved from over there. <laughs> President of AFT 3267. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul Hagen. <laughs> 
President of AFT 3267, um, just a couple, couple quick comments from me. Um, uh, uh, I'm speaking on negotiations. Before I speak about negotiations, however, I'd like to um, voice my appreciation to Mr. Ku for um, being proactive in moving forward the resolution um, uh, to support our um, families um, in this time. It means a lot to the teachers and to the families as well, I know. I also just wanted to speak briefly about a concern that I have that was brought up earlier by uh, the grandparent of one of our students concerning the move of the um, special needs class from Westlake Elementary to Thomas Edison. Um, this concern is brought to my attention um, by the staff who uh, at the school who are concerned that um, that the classroom that is currently being used does not meet the needs of the students um, and is probably not in compliance with um, what needs to be provided. And if that's the case, um, the concern is that then that classroom will be moved perhaps into one of the existing kindergarten classrooms, which would then mean moving the kindergarten classroom into the first wing of the school, which would then displace another teacher who would have to move, and there would be a domino effect. Um, with that, um, they're a little dis, um, disappointed that the move was made, you know, the decision was made over the summer and, and didn't seem like there was very much uh, opportunity for discussion or uh, well, on, on site, you know, with the sites that are going to be um, impacted. And um, I just also wanted to um, uh, echo uh, my um, Vice President Anushka's um, sentiments. Um, she presented earlier, um, as I said before, I know that when you go into closed session, um, you um, are keeping in your mind what is best for everyone um, in the district. And I'm going to leave it with that. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. So we will now be convened to closed session. So um, we'll give everybody a chance to pack up to leave. <laughs> and then we'll come back. So five minutes. Pardon me? Oh, the signatures? Yeah.